Hey, what's up? I'm Derek Kirk of Effectatron, and today I'm going to give you an honest review of Kitbash Cargo by Kitbash 3D. All right, so let's get the um, like the review part out of the way. I'm not going to drag you through it all so that you uh, you know wait till the very end to get the stuff because I don't care. YouTube's money is trash, uh, but I, but I do want to actually just inform you on how it is. So ratings, how many out of ten? Eight out of ten. The actual elements themselves of kit bash are fantastic um i would give them all nine out of ten they're not perfect drag and drop instantly work with redshift now that may be a limitation of redshift they do work right out of the gate a little better in unreal engine the assets themselves are fan fantastic the plugin itself is getting better every time they update which is good uh, i think they're still working out a lot of the kinks um, it used to forget when you would log in, even though you said, remember me, that seems to be fixed um, in the new 1.1.8. Uh, it also works with Redshift 3.6 and Cinema 4D 2024.4, which is the most up-to-date versions. So that is great. It also works with Blender and Unreal Engine. But like most third-party plugins, uh, whenever there is a big update, it takes it a few weeks to catch up. Um, so there's that. Okay, now on top of that, uh, how well does the plugin work? Well, if you ever used Kitbash before, you would buy a kit and you would download it and it would be one scene. It had everything in it. So it would take ages to load uh, and then you would have to just copy and paste out of that. It was a nightmare and everything was like labeled, but you couldn't really know what anything was because like what's building, you can't you'd be like, oh, building B. I don't know what building B is like. You have to like click it and then figure it out and whatever. Huge pain. Now, way better, way streamlined. You literally go into your kit, you get a preview of what you're about to download. You grab it, you bring it in and it pretty much works. It's a few little tweaks and a few little hiccups here and there uh, with Redshift that we'll talk about. But for the most part, way, 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 way better. Now, another really cool thing that I think a lot of people don't know about Kitbash is that actually besides just all these models that you have, you also get access to all of the individual materials as well. Uh, standalone, so you can actually just grab them. Like if you need like a nice wood floor, you can search wood and you've got all these different wood floors. There's a nice faux plank one, some nice brown wood flooring, all these things, and you can just drag and drop those in and they're all 4K or below, which is really nice. Okay, pretty cool, right? Uh, the same thing with roads stuff like that it's a lot of cool asphalts cool cobblestone roads nice roads like that brick roads different things like that and they all have everything kind of set up uh, to work pretty well with redshift so really really cool and a lot of people don't know that you can bring those in like that now what i'll tell you to do right off the bat because no youtuber or review person or teacher or whatever can tell you whether a product is worth the money to you or not uh you, whether you use it and get your money's worth out of it is up to you. What I can tell you is what it can do, what you can use it for, and then you can decide whether that's worth it to you. Now, to me, I love Kitbash um, because it's super fun as someone who likes to create and do stuff um, just kind of off the top of my head and I'll just want to just create things really quickly or whatever and I just want to like play around in 3D and learn and make something fun. Sometimes Kitbash is like a box of Legos to me. Um, it's like having a subscription to that section in, in Target or Walmart, or whatever, where you just have all the Legos and you're like, okay, I just want this out of this scene and I want this out of this Lego kit and this out of Lego kit and I just want to drag them in. I don't want to have to build them. I just have them pre-built. Boom. That's what I want, right? So if that's something that interests you, uh, <laughs> that that is kind of how it is. It's kind of like the Quixel Mega Scans, but of buildings in a way. It's kind of how I like to view it. Um, so less vegetation, more fun abstract buildings, but they're not always um, out there. There are some ones that are out there like Atom Punk, Cyberpunk, Flying Cities, stuff like that. But then there's some more practical ones that you could actually use um, for clients and stuff like construction, storefronts, retail, all this kind of stuff as well. Uh, and there's a lot of interior stuff that a lot of people don't realize like bookshelves full of tons of books, lamps, chairs, all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, really nice filler scenes um, for your scene 
versus um you know having to just like just big buildings they have a lot of small details as well which is nice okay so that's like an overview of what you get at a cargo kit bash you get access to all of these kits and each of these kits is full of all of these materials as well as all of these props and all of these things that you can bring in um all together and then break apart if you want or whatever so pretty cool uh, and you can filter them out and search them and everything uh just like that okay so that's really it now let's talk about pricing before we get too far into showing off um how cool some of it is and how wonky some of it is at the same time but if they're if you have kit bash or you're using the free assets again use down go download kit bash download the free stuff and start playing around with it because it's really cool and when you come up with ideas or questions about it let me know i would love to answer those because i want to know like what issues you guys have because that's going to help me uh answer those okay so I just want to say really quick, there are several times throughout the video where I reference this as being a sale. This is not a sale. Uh, this is actually permanent. It's just the difference between monthly and yearly. I thought it was a sale. It's not. So these prices are permanent. And if you want to save 20% more off of these or these, uh, just use the code down below, Effectatron20, and you can save 20% on top of these. So that'll be 15, 40, and uh, what, 80. So pretty good deal. I think for that price... To me, personally, totally worth it. To you, hopefully you'll know by the end of this video. All right, let's get back into it. I don't know, but um, obviously, you know, for $50 a month, if you are using Kit Bash, basically normally most of the kits themselves cost like $200. So, you know, that's what, one kit every four months? Like, you obviously are gonna get, if you buy a kit or use something from a kit once every four months, it's worth the price there for you. Obviously, if you're using Kit Bash for a client, it's probably going to pay for itself instantly in one job, um, which is nice. But that's, you know, again, up to you whether it's worth it or not. You know, I don't know. They don't sponsor me or anything. Um, I am an affiliate, but I don't have any allegiance to them or anything. I think the app needs some work. I think um, the technical support and all that stuff is fantastic. They're very quick. They do get back to you, especially for how small a team they are. Um, everything does look and work well when it does work and look well, and they do get things working quickly. Um, also, it says you have 10 downloads per month. This must all be new. I pay that and get this, so I don't know what that's about. Maybe I'm gonna, maybe they're gonna investigate my account after this or something. But um, yeah, I wouldn't for an individual. I mean, if you're doing it for work where you want to do commercial licenses, 50 bucks is probably what I would pay for a month if you're going to get work out of it. Um, beyond that, like for personal use, definitely not worth it. Because um, right now, this is like the same as Quix Omega Scans if you want to do this, uh, but you get this. So that's kind of bogus, right? Okay. Anyway, that's my honest feedback about the pricing. Because um, if you switch it to monthly, 100 bucks a month, it's not worth that. Not at all. You're better off just buying the kits you want and then being done with it. Um, okay. But they do have a lot of cargo exclusive stuff. This seems to be the way everything in the business is going is they put everything behind the subscription paywall, um, obviously, because it makes more money. Um, so that's kind of what drives the world. Anyway, maybe I'll do that. Maybe once I get to 100,000 views or subscribers on YouTube, I'll just be like, all right, done with YouTube. Then I'm going to put everything behind the paywall. Seems to be the trend, right? No, I won't do that, okay? I won't. I'm going to have to edit this video later. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so besides that, let's go ahead and just finally actually dive in and use it. So let's go ahead and grab something pretty cool. Um, let's grab a lot of like dwarf fortresses. This is my thing about this. is I like to just like skim through it and grab cool stuff. Uh, so there's some cool uh, free stuff, western things. Probably pretty cool. Soviet block is very cool for creating like a dystopian future. Goliath is a nice style. Lunar landings. There's like city streets that just have more filler stuff. Four streets. Um, Shangri-La. Sci-fi industrial is a very cool one. I have a tutorial where I use that to create stuff. Dark fantasies. Kind of like a Dark Souls style. Like gothic map. Um, kind of think of it like uh, 
Yeah, I mean, Bloodborne, Dark Souls, that kind of thing, or Warhammer, or whatever. And if you're not a gamer, you're like, what in the world is he saying? Uh, yeah, but then there's Neo Shanghai, all kinds of stuff. You guys can go through and look at this. Uh, but let's grab uh, one that we want to use. Let's grab something from Diesel Punk. I just really like the Diesel Punk style stuff. So you have all these models. Once you have a little arrow on it, it means you've downloaded it. Let's grab something we haven't downloaded before. Um, like, uh, this tram station too, right? Boom. Here we go. We can take a look at like what that's going to be. You have these nice previews. This is stuff again, you did not have before cargo when it was just kits. So that's great. You choose your target. Uh, we'll choose our JPEG 4k because it's you know a fraction of the size. And that's important to me. You click download, it downloads as fast as your internet goes. And then it doesn't take very long. And you also can keep looking and you can grab, and everything is kind of built to work together. So, like, a lot of these will all share materials. So, if you end up do tweaking a material, uh, you can easily adjust them all the way. And there's also, like, modular buildings to kit bash them. I think that's where the name it generates. So you can build your own buildings with these different windows and door fronts. So, that's... Yeah, it's really cool that you have all these options like you can add different window types, different chimneys, different whatevers to all of it or just grab the pre-made assets. So it's really like like I'm saying like Legos is the best example of what this is, right? And then you can grab like the tramway like and maybe we grab that and plug that in because all this stuff is kind of built to go together, which is what's cool about it. So the artists and stuff that create this stuff they're the real heroes of all of this, man. It's it's so cool. I'm glad that I have access to it and can bring it in. Okay, so in order to actually use it now, we go into C4D finally, go down to Cargo, and we're going to choose Redshift Legacy instead of the Redshift Standard Material. Right now, there's just some issues with Standard Material where things get plugged in um, wrong. And also, just just... Okay, this is a side note, okay? But Redshift Material has this thing called Backlight, which is so good for plants and stuff like that. And then when they made Redshift Standard Material, they updated everything and made everything better, except they got rid of that. And they're like, well, you don't need that now. Um, it was so much, it was so good. I don't know. Anyway, but we're going to choose Redshift Legacy and connect that. And we are going to choose a Redshift. No, we're not. We're just going to do Redshift Legacy and leave it at that. And then we choose connect. It says we're connected. Cool. So now we can just go in here to Cargo Kit Bash, go back to what we downloaded, which was the tram, where was it? Tram Station B, is that what we got? Is that what I ground downloaded? Yeah, and go ahead and hit Import. And it's gonna go ahead and download that and import that. And then we can go ahead and say Import for the Tramway C as well. And it should bring both of those in here. There we go, didn't take too long, uh, just like 15 seconds or something. Uh, that's brought in the tramway and our building here. And then we're going to build all the previews for all these. And like I said, the cool thing is, is they actually share a lot of materials. So you don't get duplicates. Uh, there we go. So if we take a look at this, let's take a look at the way this, these are. Because one thing I really like about Kitbash is how well labeled everything is. It's not like Quixel where it comes in as gibberish. It's actually labeled in nicely here. We've got, we know what's metal just by everything is labeled metal that has metal. There's concrete, cobblestone, atlases are our atlases. Things that have transparency or translucency normally have the trans L property built in. So that's cool. All right. And then instead of that, each of our models has different platforms of things. We can come in and toggle so that you can kit bash it again and disable and enable whatever you want. So let's go ahead and zoom out here while this builds. And you can see we've got our nice previews here. And everything is to scale. So we've got our building here stacked up on top of our railway here. So let's go ahead and grab our tram and just slide it over. We're going to grab the whole tramway C, slide it over, and we'll rotate it so we can actually just like plug it in. Probably like 40 degree angle, I'm going to guess. And ching. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And it looks like we need to rotate maybe another five degrees. R and shift. There we go. And then make sure we grab the right one and we can line that up like so. Obviously, we could do it a little. We'll take a little more time and do that properly. 
But yeah, there we go. So the pieces fit together nicely. So now we have this nice like tramway built up. And if we wanted to have a shot of like a, a nice little shot down the down the tramway into our building, we have that and everything looks good. The bricks look good. We're good to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete our background here. And we'll just do like a, a big floor plane here. We'll just add like uh, two zeros, make that big, why not? And this just to be the ground here. All right, and then on top of that, let's go ahead and delete our dome light. And um, actually we'll, we'll add a, we'll add a dome light and then we'll add a sky, like we'll type in sky, go to media and there we go, almost clear, bring that in, drag and drop. Boop, and there we go, cool. All right, so now we've got all of these built in. So there's a couple things we wanna do. So we'll look at this real quick, we'll hit render. And this is right out of the box, we haven't touched anything. Let's see how it looks. Pretty good, right? Not bad, especially with like very, very minimal lighting or anything. Everything's looking pretty good. Now we can come in here pretty close on our bricks and stuff and maybe take a look at some of those. And see if that doesn't look bad. It's obviously bump map. You know, when we get kind of these weird, it just feels CG, right? Like something's just not hitting right on these. Now this actually looks really good. I don't mind that. But um, something's just not hitting right with some of these materials. So let's just take a look at what that is. So the first thing um, I like to do, let's, if you open these up, we'll see it's all the new node editors. That's good. We've got roughness plugged in to there. We've got a roughness map and that comes into a roughness invert, which goes in here. Um, that's because most of these things were made with a, like um, a specular map, which is actually inverted. So that's why it's inverting it in. You also can see if whether that's accurate or not, and maybe you just need to skip that and actually use the roughness map, and maybe that's more what it is, right? Okay, so there's that, right? But it, we do have displacement and stuff coming in. Obviously, if you look at the geometry of this, it's nice and clean, but obviously not built for displacement um, because we don't have a ton of geometry or anything like that. It's definitely optimized for something else. So if we wanted to turn these brakes into displacement, we're going to need to do some work. So that is one issue uh, I would say that I have with it is it's not built for redshift displacement. Um, so that's a thing, uh, but that's fine. What What is really? Okay, so here's the thing we need to do is we need to open up our metal tubes, right? So if we open up metal, we can look at this and inside the redshift material, um, Everything is set to an IOR of just an IOR uh, rather than like a metalness value. And if we were to use the new standard material that has the metalness value built into it, it doesn't actually plug anything into the metalness value either. It's always set to zero. So we have to come in here and grab all of our metals and then crank up the metalness value. Now, in this version, we don't have that, but we can come in here and say metalness instead of IOR and then do that. And I like to say like 0.95, there we go. And it says the reflectivity is a zero, I mean a black um, or point, point 0.3, so it won't be like pure black. So this is kind of the thing that's like, that's gonna make it so metallic right so if you look at this like lamp post here this probably needs to be a little rustier than it does need to be shiny so we probably need it to be more white and so we're already having to tweak materials which is kind of lame it doesn't look bad especially from a distance like that looks not too shabby honestly uh that did kind of fix most of our metals um but if we want to we could make it white and that's going to change it and make it a little more um little different so maybe we'll just switch everything to 50% gray and just leave it at that and let the roughness map drive it and let our metalness just kind of be and that's kind of the first issue I have with Redshift uh, and kit bash is that metalness feature is never works properly which is a bummer um, because it always always takes tweaking now 
The good thing is, is transmission and stuff, translucency and that stuff does when you don't screw it up by enabling the redshift shader graph option or saying to do the standard shader. Sometimes if you don't click like the right things, things will come in and they, they just won't have a transmission value at all. And you have to just turn it on. So, okay, we'll take a look at that in a second though. But that's mainly, mainly all we have to do. Now, the IOR values of everything are always going to be 1.5, which obviously is not ideal, um, especially for things like gold and floor grading and stuff like that. Like maybe you have to cobblestone, obviously wouldn't have an IOR of 1.5. It would be something lower, like 1.2. So yeah, it's not really drag and drop, but it is quick to change, and it does work across all the models, but that's kind of lame, right? Um, so that's my first honest feedback of it is they've got to fix the metalness values for Redshift. Now, maybe it's just a Redshift thing. And if I came in here with Octane, it'd be like, ta-da, someone wants to buy me Octane so that I can compare, you know, let me know, please. Okay, so, but now we've kind of tweaked it all. Let's take a look at, you know, what it looks like real quick with the new metals and stuff and from a, more of a bird's eye view. And then we could talk about how to add displacement to stuff, which really, you really only need to add displacement um, when you're going to be really up close to something. Because, like, right now, this looks pretty good. Like, I'd be happy. It's, it's, it's not too bad, but the very, very basic lighting that we have. And, you know, obviously I didn't make any of that, which is what's cool about it. I can just drag and drop it in. Bingo bongo. Nice. Okay. So... Let's bring in like a vehicle just for the sake of doing that uh, to compare with our buildings and stuff. So we'll grab um, the cyberpunk bike and we'll import that. So, so far, yes, it works well. Does it work well enough for the price that it costs? No. That's the truth. Um, okay. Okay. Will it get there? Hopefully. Um, we'll see. All right, so you can just use our placement tool and drag and drop everything on because everything is built in a nice, clean way that everything is in the right spot. All right, here we go. We've got our cyberpunk car in our diesel punk world. Get me out of this. Uh, whoops. I'm inside of a container here. All right, cool. We'll grab our car, our bike. We'll rotate it a smidge. And let's just take a look at what that looks like without touching anything there. See, that can, comes in quick, right? And that's the thing that it has over on Unreal Engine, is it takes forever to bring anything in Unreal Engine. But the metalist values still work in there. Okay, so we've got uh, decent, but our bike looks really flat and crummy. And most likely, let's grab our stuff here. Most likely... Um, we've got stuff plugged in in the wrong spot. So body type, open that up. Okay. Um, I think the roughness maps don't need to be inverted. <laughs> Again, though, it may be a metalness thing, but see when I take it out of that invert, oh, it still looks bad, right? It just looks bad. So we're going to come in here. We're going to change this to metalness, change it to like five percent for this one because we do need to be pretty metal and crank it all the way up to one and hopefully that'll make this look nice and metallic maybe too much so 50 percent and this is it this is the thing like i don't i'm buying these assets i don't want to have to tweak them after i bring them in just to get them to look like they look in the render scene. And maybe it's a redshift thing. Maybe I'm sleeping on Octane. But here's the thing. Okay. Let me show you something different here. Right? So let's let's delete our car real quick. Delete our bike. Delete our bike out of here. Go into the extension. Go into cargo. Change it to redshift standard material. And then connect it. Okay, there we go. Spam the heck out of that. Okay, so now we've got Redshift Standard Material selected. Import our bike now. And let's see what the difference is. 
So it's kind of, that's the thing. It's like, I don't want to have to pick and choose. And that's, and honestly, that's Redshift's fault for having two different materials that do the same thing differently. <laughs> Dumb. Um, but so that's brought in and it seems like it's come in and it's given us one material and that's it. And nothing else has come in. So that's stupid. So let's try to fix that again by going to cargo center material but this time we're going to use the shader graph just to use the center material try it again and again i'm showing you honest feedback i'm not trying to sell you on it i here's the thing i love it but i want it to be better so bad and i want them to make money so that they can make it better but maybe Maybe Redshift's not the answer. Like, what is this rendered in? Probably Blender, to be honest. Uh, okay, so we've got our bike. Let's go ahead and grab it, put it right here. It's coming with all our materials. All right, and we'll grab our bike and we'll rotate it. And let's go ahead and hit render on this. We'll zoom in a smidge more because I think this time it's going to look a little better because we brought it in with the standard material. Um, doesn't look that much better and our translucency doesn't work. So again, more things to fix, which is annoying, but we can grab our katana, our bike, all these things. And what we can do is select all of our bike stuff here, tires, well, go to material tools, convert and replace with nodes. Boop, and now it's a new node system. Grab our katana bike body and go to surface. Go down to metalness and crank it up to 0.98 like pretty much one and then now it's going to look pretty good now it looks nice and metallic maybe that's too high maybe like 0.8 and then we have our reflection roughness and stuff which should have a roughness map but instead for whatever reason it's plugged into the diffuse roughness map so that's annoying so we just come in here and fix that but again this isn't stuff i want to have to deal with this is bullcrap, and you can't like batch do that, uh, which is annoying. So we'll grab that, go to roughness, and this is only because we imported it in with the shader graph and the new standard material. So we got it to plug in right the old way, but not look right, and so it's just a it's just a lot, right? So I'm not doing a good job of selling you on this, and that's not. I don't think that's my fault. Like I look, I don't work for them. I get affiliate if you think it's like worth it. Yeah, but right now at this time, I don't know that it is, right? But now, okay, we've got our things plugged in correctly. We've got our transmission here. And what I want to do with this transmission is for whatever reason, it plugs in this refraction into transmission color. Definitely not what needs to be there. That needs to come in here to transmission weight. And this color needs to go into transmission color. And now this should pop in and actually be see-through. Yep. Okay. And so now we also on top of that have all of our emission stuff, which of course is plugged in, but not powered. So we need to add a weight to that. Turn on our lights. So we'll say like 150, maybe just blast them out. Why not? And then we can add like bloom to that, which will make our lights look really cool. Like that. Cool. There we go. So now, you know, it looks good. Looks really good. But it took us like a few clicks to get there. And when you have an asset that looks like this and you hit import, you think it's going to look like that just by adding lights to it. And it just doesn't. And that's what's annoying about Kitbash right now. Now, also, when you bring stuff in with a new thing, all of our bump and all that stuff is just, like, way too intense. I, I'm i not sure what it is about, about it right now that makes it, like, so. But there we go. Okay, so here's our cool bike. You know, we've got, we've got all the, the details and all the models and stuff are amazing. It looks great. We've got the cool brake lights coming through the light. Like, when you get it looking good, it looks so good. But then we also have this weird where our bump is, like, way too strong on all this stuff. And, like, what is happening? Why is this happening? And that's 
the issue that we come across far too often with all this kit bash stuff and this thing. So let's go ahead and grab all of these as long as they're all the same properties. We should be able to go down to the bump in the geometry and toggle the intensity of that bump down to like 0.2. Maybe even like 0 0.02, honestly, which is a pretty common thing for bump. And it still might be a little too intense. So let's go down even lower, 0 0.01. And we just want like a little bit of that bump in there. So here's the thing, right? We've got that bump on the bike. And that looks pretty good. We still could come in here with our bike and if we really wanted to, we could add some like nice gloss on top of it with the coat like that and do like a nice sheen across the top. Like we did a, like a lacquer on it. It's going to really help it look extra nice. Um, so let's go ahead and add a light on here. But then again, like, yes, you can get some really cool looking stuff out of this. But why is it taking so much work when I paid for it to work properly? So we'll go ahead, grab our light. And we'll place it right here. And then we'll go ahead and grab our light and go to this, say target tag and null. Grab our area light, pull it back up and back and around. Turn that down to like eight. There we go. So we have this nice, cool, like backlight. Like say this is coming from our building, right? And man, look how cool that looks, right? Like the bike, like the, the ground looks good. The bike looks good. And then we grab our camera, we do a little depth of field. We said it's like 2.4 and we select the bike right here. And now we have like a really cool shot of a cyberpunk bike in this diesel pump training station. Um, obviously, yes, it took some time to get it working properly. But does it look good when it does? Yes. Was that still faster than building any of it myself? Yes. So that's the part that makes it tough. So it is saving me time and money and buying models and things like that. That looks really good. So that's the part that's tough. Like there's, there's all these little tiny, like it's, that's what I'm saying is seven out of 10. It's so close to being insanely good. That is frustrating. And I think the choke point is redshift. And I don't want that to be the case. I don't want to learn a different render engine. I think that it can be good. I think that this looks so good. And Redshift looks good when it gets it right. So we can come in here and like get really tight shots of like, you know, just just this. Like just the little display. We can be like plink right here. We get like nice little shots. And we can turn up our emission. Maybe is there anything plugged in there? We can, I don't know if there's a color plugged in there or not. Doesn't look like it. Okay. So that's just here. Oh, Element Atlas. Yeah, let's crank that up to like 50. And that's going to give us our screens. Too intense. Yeah, let's go back down to 20. There we go. So now we have this cool like cyberpunk. We've got our display and everything going on. We could choose like we could make a null and place that null right here real quick. And then grab our camera. Say this null is the object we want to focus on. And now we can move our camera around and always be focused on that dash if you want, which is pretty cool, right? Like this looks good now, but it took some time and that's frustrating. So like, uh, yeah, let's, let's just finish out the scene and make it kind of a cool render because we might as well like, so, um, let's go out the other way. Let's do it this way. Ooh. Ooh, 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 little Top Gun look. All right, let's grab it. Actually, that's not too bad. I want to slide it over a little bit like that. Okay, we'll grab our dome lights. Maybe rotate it a smidge so it's not straight at the camera. A little bit more like that, yeah. Bam! All right, cool. Uh, and then we'll grab our aerial lights. I like that we're lighting it up from here. We want to grab another one copy and paste control click drag 
and we'll go ahead and move it up top. So, yes. So the cool thing is you can bring in a bunch of these models and because they're optimized so well in C4D, it all runs smoothly. I am, because I mean, this is looking cool. Oh, uh, we've got our aerial light. Let's grab it and pull it forward back up here. And what I want to do is I want this one to be like kind of a big one. So we hit T, scale it up big, pull it back. And I want it to kind of be like, like back, back. And I want it to be sharp, like boom, very focused. I want to put a gobo on it. This is going to kind of fake our like clouds uh, kind of thing. So we're going to grind something that looks kind of like black and white, really stippled. Um, like this one, maybe. Yeah. Max on Gobo's exterior. Boop. Okay. And then we can start dialing up this red a bit to soften it up. And what we can do is turn off our dome light real quick, just so we can see the effect of that light. There we go. So we get kind of these natural, um, highlights and stuff across and we can start, we could dial this up a little more, make it a little softer, a little cloudier. Not too bad. And again, we can dial it down and let's make it like a little, little golden, little golden hour. -y. Yeah. Okay. So again, don't light back on in combination with that looks pretty good. We can affect our bloom dial up the threshold of that a bit. So it's not so intense. There we go. Nice. And obviously if you wanted to, we could put in some buildings in the background real quick, but that, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and go to redshift objects environment. Let's save real quick before we break everything. Bike. Okay. All right. So we are going to use Kit bash some in the really rad renders sweepstakes challenge, uh, some of the tutorials, uh, and we'll cover some of this stuff as well. So you'll get to figure out how to fix and tweak some stuff. Um, but you can see why. I mean, they look awesome. Uh, we're going to grab our environment. We're going to go to our dome light. We're going to tell our dome light not to affect our environment. On. Environment. Dial it way down. And make it like kind of gray. Maybe maybe a little purpley. Nah. Yellow. Green. Blue. Blue. Yeah, little little gray blue. Nice. Okay. And we're gonna go even lower. Oh one. Oh oh one. And maybe up a smidge. Yep. But we're going to pull it back. Mr. P. Yep. We're gonna dial it back so we kinda have it more towards the back and not so much on our bike, which is what we want. That looks pretty good. Now let's grab a building. Kit bash. Boom, 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 boom. We'll go to kits. Go to diesel punk for our background here. Or we could do cyberpunk if we want. Like it's an old abandoned thing that's been left behind. Uh, but let's go. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? Let's just put a city back there. Like uh, double towers. Like a giant building. Could be a big pyramid. That's very Blade Runner-y. Corporate building. Corpo. Let's do 2K. Actually, 1K is probably fine because it's going to be in the background and out of focus. Boom, boom. Import that. I will say it helps to have this toggled off when you're importing just like anything because it doesn't want to have to try to render it and build the previews at the same time. Always faster. So hopefully to sum it up before we finish this scene, I always just feel like every video, whether it's a review or not, I need to make something and just show it off so yeah does it have its issues yes is it expensive for the amount of issues it has yes is it still really a really good product yes and that's the tough part because this bike is cool the cars are cool the buildings are cool everything in it is cool the plug-in works well i feel like the choke point for real is redshift um and we could, we'll talk about fixing displacement and stuff in another video. But if there, if you have Kitbash or you're using the free assets, again, use down, go download Kitbash, download the free stuff and start playing around with it because it's really cool. And when you come up with ideas or questions about it, let me know. I would love to answer those because I want to know like what issues you guys have because that's going to help me uh, answer those. Okay, so 
Kipesh. Pyramid. Import. Is it importing or not? Or did it just freeze? Okay, so it's brought that in. It's building all of our previews. What we're going to do is just zoom out here, and it's a huge mega structure because it's, you know, Corpo. <laughs> and we're just going to bring it back here like that. Whenever you see something like that where it starts, like, fading away, again, that is in your display. That is the view clipping. Set it to large or huge, and you're going to see that back there. And now we have this cool big old building in the background. It should be back in the fog, which is nice. We'll let all this stuff build in. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to find the emission one. See if we can find one called like Atlas or Lamps Trim. There we go. They're always called something like that. You're either labeled emission or light or something like that. That's pretty easy. Blue glass emissive. And then all the atlases. And well, we'll just look at each one individually. Uh, but we'll go in the shader graph. And we'll see if there's an emission color plugged in. We'll come down here and turn that up. Because we just want to see it back there. I mean, we'll say like uh, 50. And it's probably too high, but that's fine. It's way back there. And then we'll go ahead and grab. These don't look like they need it. We'll do lamps. That one probably does emission color. Scroll down. 50. Cool. Boom. And boom. So we'll see what that looks like with that in the background. And the thing is, despite all those little nuances and changes that... The good, here's the good news, okay? Oh, that looks dope. Is a lot of the changes are, they repeat, right? So once you figure out how to do it for one object, it's pretty much the same for all the other objects. So that's the good thing about it. The bad thing is that there are issues at all to begin with. So yeah. That's kind of the bummer. So we turn our environment off. Let's see if we can see those lights back there. We might need to just crank. Well, that looks kind of cool without the environment on. Let's turn our environment down. Even thinner, smaller. A little less. There we go. Nice. It looks like some of those lights are trying to shine in. Let's really crank them up. Let's see like 500. I don't know why. It's probably way too bright. I just want to see if we see them. It doesn't look like we're going to really. Which is fine. Blast them. Boom. Oh yeah, there we can see our lights. Yeah. Nice. They're just going to load in. A little slower. Right, so, like, while this builds, let's just go ahead and play around with this. We'll go to our LUTs. We'll grab something cool. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Contrast. The contrast the soft. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll try that. Not bad. Colors. Definitely do a little contrast. Do a little S-curve. Like a so. We might could bring up the very, very dark, kind of make it look a little hazier. And then the bloom, of course, a little bit of that coming in here. Dial in the intensity of that, it's not bad. And we could do flares if we wanted to, we'd only need to. Denoise streak, I think all that's fine. Okay, so we hit render on this, let it go, and we should have a pretty cool looking shot. We might actually dial down the contrast a bit. I like to use filmic contrast, high contrast. Yeah, and then dial this down. Mm -hmm. Convert before applying the LUT. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Yeah, so I mean that. Still a pretty cool shot and a pretty cool scene to be made in what, like 30 minutes or something? Like obviously I was talking about it a lot more much faster than that so yes it still has some issues and things which are annoying but it still makes your work so much faster so it's tough to decide 
I can't tell you whether it's worth it or not. The one thing I can tell you is that the geometry is good and the objects and stuff like that. Um, adding displacement things we can talk about in another video. If you want, let me know in the descriptions because that's a, a pretty big deal. Um, but man, it does look pretty good. The textures are good quality. The models are good quality. Everything about it is good, except how well it works with Redshift, which once it does with a few little tweaks, works really well with Redshift and looks fantastic. So yeah, it's tough, right? So yeah, that hopefully, you know, that's what I would say. Okay, here's what I would say about the whole thing. To sum it all up, 7 out of 10. If it was just the models and stuff alone, 9 out of 10. Again, because it's just redshifts the choke point. The metallic, the metalness settings alone are annoying. The transmission settings are annoying. The emission settings are annoying. But all fixable. But the fact that I have to fix them is annoying. And then, but on top of all of that, the plugin works really well now. It doesn't have any issues really um, anymore. Uh, it, it, the stuff looks dope once you get it in there. I mean, that looks awesome. I could not build this myself. I couldn't, and especially not in 30 minutes. So, worth it to me? Yes, because this is the kind of stuff I want to create. Now, is it the kind of stuff you want to create? I don't know. But these are cool. You can just like grab buildings and stuff for backgrounds, for filler. You can grab bookcases, bookshelves, skateboards, whatever. Like there's retail shops, bakery, there's croissants, and stuff like that. There's all kinds of stuff in there. It's all searchable. The plugin works well. It's all filterable, which is really nice. It just has a few issues when it comes to working with Redshift. Now, the really cool part, here's what... <laughs> I like, and here's what we're going to do before we wrap it up is we're going to make this a tune render. Um, actually, no, we're not. So if you want to know, uh, I used uh, Kitbash in the tune render video uh, where I, it, uh, it's check out my videos, uh, look up Redshift Tune Shader. Um, basically, I use all the Kitbash stuff and then I just overlay a tune effect on top of it and turn all of these really cool models into uh, an anime style. So... It's really easy on how to do that. Like, obviously, this looks really cool and clean and nice. And the only thing that I wish Kitbash had that it doesn't, and it bothers me, is if you look at these, right, you see these cool pictures on their website and these cool thumbnails um, like this. It's got these little people and a dog and a guy with a guitar and a guy hanging off this rope. And then you've got all these people in the street doesn't come with people like there's no people i want a people's pack i want cargo kit bash of people um like big medium small get on that and make me a nice kit but yeah um that's what i want i think that would take it over the edge for me and make it a must-have if it had people um that could populate your scene with it even with the nuances and tweaking it and stuff for redshift i think that would send it over the edge for me and make it absolutely worth the money Right now, at 50% off, I'd say that is the time to buy. If you're going to buy, uh, use my code below, um, and I, it'll help me out and help you out as well. But yeah, maybe you're going to buy it, maybe not. It's really cool. It's pretty easy to fix. So, I mean, again, the, the proof is in the pudding. Pudding. Um, so there you go. Hopefully, you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see more. Um reviews and stuff like this that are honest and really dive deep into it because hopefully i've persuaded you either one way or another at least informed you enough into how to make your own decision go download cargo for free and try it and see if you like all the free assets because there are a lot of really cool free assets available so definitely do that don't don't sleep on that at least nice pretty cool Let's let it finish rendering and I'm going to wrap it up with that. All right. There we go. I mean, that looks pretty cool, man. I'm not going to lie. Pretty good. And that's just frustrating about it. 
because I want it to be that without all the other annoying stuff in between. So yeah, hopefully this hopefully you enjoy this. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.